night then. Got blooming soaked today, um, stripping off shutters and what have you. Um, I put together a video of how uh, curved uh, coping on top of a, a stone wall was done, bending um, timbers, what have you. Just some of the details, how it was all held in place, thought it might be of interest here. Okay, um, yeah, good, enjoy. Okay, so now the wall's been rebuilt. My job is to cast a um, top to it, similar to the, the original. I did salvage this piece of the original and cut the edges so that when we cast against it, it's tidy. But it also, I brought it in with a string line. Now, why are you going out of focus? Here we are, we're back in focus. I brought in with a string line to get the height with the existing there. Um, but by, by placing that, that gives me something I can work off now because I've got to do this bend. So what I intend to do, I'm going to put this bit of batten on. I'm going to probably put a pin in over there and wire it back so it's held tight against the wall under the existing coping there. And then try and pull it and bend it round under this side. That's the plan anyway. That gives us a little bit of a lip on the casting thing like this then so it's just got a slight overhang and uh, I'll work off that we'll see how we go okay so first of all I've driven this spike in here uh, on the back of the existing coping obviously as we're right by an electric pole a cat scan and also I just checked there was nothing coming down it so that we're not going to hit anything, apart from you know if there's hidden water pipe or something. But anyway, I've driven that down the back there. It's tight against the back of the concrete. I've ratchet strapped a piece of wood to the front here then. I will tie that a different way maybe later, but that, that gives me a slot now I can stick the batten in and then bend it round. See how that goes. Okay, so I've done the same the other end. It's absolutely horrible bending this bit of batten around. You can feel it, you know, you're putting a lot of strain on everything. But you can see here, because the curve, I'm just following the existing curve, this isn't, it isn't the natural curve, it's got a, it's, it's not a continuous curve, so I'm going to have to do some more work pulling that in then, to cast my top. Um, I also might, I should probably put some slots down the back of the timber to help it bend a bit more, and then I'll have to put some more pins in intermediately and pull it in like that and that will give me my um, the bottom of the, um, the casting the underside there and then I'll have to screw a piece on the face here to get the front end but as I say I've got to pull this in some more so we'll have to play about with it but there you go that was scary maybe I'll get on with this straight bit that'll be easy there we go, I wanted to see if that was viable. Well, I thought I was doing so well yesterday. Bent the, t the think, timber round, but then it snapped. Um, snapped here. So now I'm, I've pulled it in. You can see how we've pulled it in using wire because I can't prop it off the road. So I've pulled it in this way with wire and wedge here. I've got this piece of timber across here. It's tapped behind the old one with a pin. We've got a pin this side and then a wedge in between, pushing it all up tight against the existing. But I'm now going to, because some of the, the timber's snapped in places, I'm going to line it with thin ply so I can get a smoother curve that suits what I want and uh, see how that goes. And I'll, I'll have to, I can't do it in one piece anymore because it's snapped over there, but I'll, uh, I'll see how I get on. But I'm very stressed now, so I don't want to talk to you, I've got to get on. Because the board I'm going to line it with is so so thin, um, it's, it was sliding between the guide on the uh, circular saw, so I've, I've screwed this plate on to hopefully overcome that, otherwise I have to clamp on a guide rail every time. Okay, because it's snapped, um, I just can't, I can't bend it anymore. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut a mitre here, take it down, the, I've got this guide so I can get a uh, right angle and I cut a mitre there then I'm going to have to reform as I go in there. That's the guide so I can get the circular saw on it. Okay to 
get the wood to bend then it's been slotted in the back and then to pull it in tight I've got wire around a stake here and across drilled through below the level of the, the concrete finish that will be covered in sand um, which can be pointed up afterwards I've done it in a loop I'm twisting it up like so to hold it all in place Okay, because I couldn't quite get the alignment I wanted. I lined it with thin ply in the end to get the curve to match the wall. I've uh, rolled up paper to fill some of the gaps. And then I've gone over with silicone just filling only holes before we oil it and cast into it. Okay, so for the backboard, I've just spent ages you can see just running the circular saw through like three quarters of the way through this 4x1 but look I've got a lovely bend on it now I can bend that and pack that out to the line we want but I can't do it today because I've got to go get Terry from the vets there we are stay tuned okay so I've stuffed holes with silicone and uh, now put a bead of sand over That'll be easier to break out afterwards and point up. Now, sort of, there's only wrong answers on this job really because we're trying to marry this very shallow, shallow slope to a much steeper slope over here. You can see how that's got, that's got like a good three inch fall on it. That, over that end, it's only got like one and a half, and then it's bending as well. I've never seen the original, so this is the best I can do. It's all oiled up, ready to go. The wood was slotted to bend it, to curve it around. I did have an accident when I first started, so I had to join in here for the original snap. So if this video sees the light of day, it'll be once we've taken the shuttering off and you see whether the uh, job comes out good or not. Okay, I thought I meant better mention these. These are just temporary spacers to hold out until we've got concrete in, which will then hold the curve. There's two of those just placed in. And then to pull in tight, you see we've got the wires twisted in and wedges. Okay, so here's a little trick when you've got light shuttering and you don't want to put a heavy poker on. I've got a SDS plus drill here. I put it on hammer only setting. I've got that uh, which is a socket attachment. Uh, that's because it's got a flat head. I'm going to put that on the shuttering and just lightly tap and see how things sink down. And obviously I'm holding you so. You can see. Quite a dry mix is, is settling down so I don't want any air bubbles in the face. Okay, so as well as shaking it into a pudding at the front end to get all the air bubbles out to create a nice face, I've also got now an uh, Aris trowel. Now that's got, I'm going to put an edge on the front of the concrete. I want to start getting that in before I go too far. Because that will give a nice soft edge. Pushing it back off the top then and then I'll try and just sort of push that in to start with. It's, just, it's not all in one go and I'm, I'm going to finish it off again. You can see it looks like a very dry mixture again with but by shaking it pulls the moisture out. But now I'm trying to just push that in, get it started, stopping the edge. It's less likely to break to the soft edge. There you are, I can see I've done a bit but obviously it's a long process. I just wanted to start softening it off before, um, before it goes too hard. Uh, I've, st I've still got to screed it to get the level I want and everything. I just wanted to start forming it before I go too far. 
So to start with, I think getting the material and tapping it in against the back back um, shutter, then I could remove the um, intermediate props that have given us the spacers. And I start screeding as as it fills up the level. I start screeding across and tapping it again. It's all been painted with mould oil, uh, strike release oil. Uh, it stops the concrete sticking to the wooden surface. Holes are filled with silicone. So now it's all been screeded across with a batten with this piece of timber brought into line, worked back up, tamped to get all the uh, fill all the voids. And going round with this uh, plastic float, just pulling out, pulling it tidy into shape, and we'll leave it drop. So we covered it up for lunch and we had a visitor. Okay, well it's Monday now, we last saw it on Friday. Uh, Glenn's going to be stripping the um, shutters for me today, so let's hope everything goes okay. We'll have a look in a minute, okay? Thank you. Okay, so once he's cleaned this out, I can point this up then. That's the sand to put in the front. Run the grinder over it just to soften the edge of it. Okay. Here we are then, Glenn's uh, stripped the shutter. It's got to be pointed up and a slight touch over the grinder. See the lip. I don't know what you're doing in the fridge. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. You don't want to be left behind though. Subscribe. See you again.